Hey, Donna Schwartz here. In this video, I'm going to perform the solo Canzonetta and Giga. Now, you could say Giga or Giga. There's some controversy on that, but we're not going to get into that. Um, this solo is by Leroy Oshkransky. This solo, a lot of times, is performed as part as, of state solo festivals or auditions to get into honor bands or all district bands or all county auditions, that kind of thing. So I'm going to perform this piece. And then um, after I perform it, I'm going to give you some tips to think about that will help you with certain fingerings, um, with certain with certain notes, keeping them in tune, because there's a lot of high Ds in this piece, and that note tends to fall quite sharp at times, too. Um, and also, I'm going to give you some tips in terms of the tempo and that kind of thing. So without further ado, here's the solo. tips for this piece. The first um, part of this suite, the canzonetta, should be flowing, should be light. It's in our key of D minor, concert F minor. Now, the thing that I would recommend in terms of fingerings, for this first part of this, definitely you can use the bis fingering. Okay, the bis fingering is another way to finger B flat. Now, for some of you, you were taught one and one for B flat. That will not work for this piece, that you'll have a lot of difficulty. Some of you were taught, um, as I was in the very beginning, A plus the bottom side key. That will also work. That can work for this. However, because the tempo of this is around half note, remember this isn't cut time, half note equals 84 or 88, somewhere around there, it would be wise, I think, to use the bis key. And it's basically using your index finger of your left hand pressing down in between the first key and the little guy. We call that the bis key. And that's what makes that um, sound. The bis key is good also because it's very in tune. Okay, like the A plus the bottom side. Those notes are really in tune. Some of the other fingerings are not as in tune. So that's my first tip in terms of fingerings. In terms of 
um, there's a couple of other fingerings for some notes that tend to be really sharp. And I was probably sharp on a couple of these as well. Um, the high D in the first line, you see the high D, the one, two, three, four, the fifth measure. Well, you know it as octave key plus the palm key. But what you also need to realize too, if you play that just like that, you really have to alter the inside of your mouth to get that to sound more in tune. Another trick, do that same fingering, but add all three fingers of your right hand. So let me play it open the normal way first, and then I'm gonna add those three fingers and listen to the sound. Okay, so I did like one long beat for each. Can you hear the difference? The second way is a little bit flatter, it's a little bit more in tune. You can also use that same right hand idea for that C sharp, the high C sharp, that's the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth um, staff down, the last measure. So you're going the measure before, G, B flat, and then C sharp, not totally open plus the octave key. Add the right hand. Let me do those two measures the normal way first, and then I'll do those two measures with the right hand down for the C sharp. <laughs> Can you hear the difference? Okay, so this helps to get that C sharp in tune as well. So anytime that you have a high D that you're holding out, or the C sharp that you're holding out, you may want to start practicing with your right hand three fingers down to get that a little bit more in tune. Okay, that's my first tip in terms of that. In terms of this canzonetta part of this piece, you've got a lot of... Um, Really, they become 16th notes. The 8th notes become 16th notes. So I would suggest don't start practicing this at half note equals 84 or 88. Put it at, put it at quarter note equals 84 or 88. And work on it this way. So it's 1, 2. Really so that you can get the fingerings down. There's a tricky passage on the bottom of that first page with all those those running eighth notes, you again, you don't want to start off by playing it fast. In fact, what you really should do is finger first. So you set your metronome up. I'm going to go from the last two lines after the four measures of rest. And I'm just going to finger with air sounds. I'm, I apologize, you can't see my fingerings, but you'll be able to hear the sound through this. So I'm thinking... Actually, let me do this... Let me do this quarter note equals 84, not half note. Okay, you could probably hear the sound, the air sounds. Now, definitely use the bis fingering for this section. Um, let me see something. You could also use the A plus the side, but use the bis key. It's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit easier to handle. So a section like this, set some goals for yourself. Start off quarter note equals 84 and finger that passage with articulation. Okay. Um, at least three times, at least three times in a row, get your fingers know where they're going. Then you put the metronome on and then you play it. If you're still making a mistake, then don't play it. Keep fingering it. Your brain's going to remember what you do. So if you do something wrong, that's what your brain remembers. And it just, it makes it that much harder to break that habit. So that's a passage you definitely want to work on. Start off slow, create a goal, start off quarter note equals 84. And then once you nail that, 88, then once you nail that, keep putting it up four notches until you're able to get it to the half note equals 84 or 88. Okay, don't rush it. Really, don't rush the process. You want to really get this going right. Now, the second part of this from the conspirato, the seven measures of rest, now you're in your key of G or you could say concert B flat. Here's the tip I'm going to give you for this one. 
there's a lot of passages where you're going from B to C. Now, that's fine. You could definitely perform it that way, but there's a quicker way to get those C's out. And if you're not aware of it, I'd like to show that to you right now. We call this side C. You finger a B. I'm going to say octave key or note, doesn't matter, but you finger a B. And then the middle side key, you press with the side of your right hand. So B plus the second side key equals C. So here's C, second finger. Here's the C with the side C. They're pretty close to being in tune, not totally. Um, you wouldn't want to necessarily hold, you know, hold on to a note with the side key, um, the side C fingering. You really want to use that for fast passages like the conspirato. So where I really used this was in the, um, from the second page, one, two, the third staff down, that little section, the one, two, the second and the third measures, the A to the B to the C, B, A. So it's going to look like this, A, B, C, B, A, A, B, C, B, A, A, B, C, B, A. So what you really want to do with something like this movement, you definitely want to work really slowly with the metronome, but you've got to finger it first. So it's actually much faster. I'm going to set this for 104 for right now, the dotted quarter note, which gets the big beat. And I'm going to finger it, and I'm going to think about that side C. Okay, so that's going to eventually be the tempo around 104. What you want to do, get this down to 60. I would recommend starting this at 60 and sit there and finger it. Remember, you want to front load the work. You don't want to make it harder for yourself right before the audition. What you want to do is do the hard work now, you know, really think this through, create your goals, and really work through it because in the end, you're going to make a lot more progress. Yes, it's going to be slow in the beginning, but that's okay. All right, it's better off that way than racing, you know, rushing to the end and trying to get the stuff to work. So definitely start off this second movement or part of the piece at dotted quarter note equals 60 and sit there and finger it over and over again. Once your fingers know where they're going, what I mean by that is that you're not thinking about where you're putting your fingers. Once they know where they're going, then you play it, okay? There's no shame in being able to only move the metronome like one notch from one day to the next, okay? Um, I would suggest when you get this piece and you're doing this for an audition, this is the, this is the book. I would suggest that you get the version that comes with the audio CD, okay? Use it because there's a really good performance of the piece, but there's also a track on there for you to perform with the background accompaniment. That's what I used. Now, what's also really awesome that that uh, that Voxman and, and Rubank did, there's also software on this CD that adjusts the tempo. The software is called the Amazing Slow Downer. That is great software. I gotta tell you, um, you're saving, th this, this is awesome. You should definitely download that software. I use that for jazz all the time and you should absolutely absolutely use it for classical music too. This can act like your metronome, but with the piano accompaniment also. You want to get that piano accompaniment in your ears, even though, yes, you're not playing the piano accompaniment, but it really helps when you're playing your solo to hear all the parts that are going on. It just makes it that much more fun, that much more interesting, and it helps you to tell your story, your story, your interpretation, of this piece so definitely if you have if you don't you know have the opportunity to get this version that's okay you know use this video to help you but if you didn't buy this yet go on amazon.com or jwpepper.com or stanton's music you know dot com just find a site and look for the one that has the audio cd um with it it has a cd rom with tempo adjustment software it'll really really benefit you so I hope you like this video. I hope you got a lot out of um, listening to the performance and listening to my performance notes. I'm going to, there's going to be a link 
below the video that uh, will send you to for a copy of the performance notes. And if you like this video, like it, that would be awesome. Subscribe to my channel. Also check out my website at www.donnerschwartzmusic.com and subscribe. I send out weekly newsletters with tips and inspiration to keep you going, keep you having fun and enjoying music. So definitely check out those things. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day.